Hello, you're watching Buzz News with me, Charlotte Coles. It's 4.15 on the 12th of January. Here are your top stories this evening. A petition has been launched to keep all entrances to Pool Park open in calling upon the monarchy for support. A children's book illustrator has dedicated her latest book to her friend who passed away from cancer. And the Bournemouth woman helping people's physical and emotional well-being using dogs. The proposed closure of a pool park entrance has sparked a petition to keep the gates open. Ewan Walsh has more. BCP Council have announced that the Whitecliffe Road and Twemlow Avenue entrance to Pool Park is set to be permanently closed for vehicles from the 19th of January. Many residents are also against the change. I think it shouldn't be closed myself. I think it should be made safer, but um, not completely closed. I would maintain the pavements better and, you know, make sure that they're wide enough and safe enough. And I would put a pelican crossing. However, some residents think it's a good idea. I believe that Merrick Park and I think it's King's Park or Queen's Park in Bournemouth are in fact traffic free. So why can't we have Pool Park as being traffic free? I think it'd be a good idea. The decision is set to be trialled on January 17th. You and Walsh, Buzz News. The Guide Dogs charity will be at the Bournemouth Volunteer Fair again today, which is being hosted at Bournemouth Library. They are looking for puppy raisers to train the next generation. Well, the puppy raisers is a pretty full-on volunteer role, so we're looking for people that have the time to spend to basically bring up a puppy from when they're eight weeks old until they're 16 months old. And they have them in their home and they help them socialise. We help them with the training. Um, so that they develop into a very well-rounded dog. So when they're old enough to go on to training school, they're, they're all set up, ready to become a future life changer. Francesca Brailuski and her husband David co-produced Frankie and Ali and Happy, a children's book. The book is dedicated to their friend Ali, who passed away from cancer last year. The profits made will be donated to Marie Curie, the organisation who took care of Ali. Okay, um, well, it started with my best friend, Ali, who sadly two years ago passed away, sorry if I get a bit, she passed away from bowel cancer. She, had a, she was diagnosed with April and unfortunately sort of passed away in October. So I've always been a bit of a procrastinator. I have a great problem finishing stuff. So I vowed to do something that would be useful and memorable in her name. And, and as I'm a children's book illustrator, I decided it was going to be a book. I think the, the idea is to just give it to someone who actually matters to you, uh, who maybe is having a bad day, who's, you know, who needs a bit of cheering up, who just needs somebody to say, actually, I give a damn about you. And this is to show, because that mm. was the whole thing with Ali. Ali used to go out, uh, her partner Andy said, she used to go out shopping with him, and every time she was in the shop, she'd say, oh, Fran would like that. Or, oh, you know, sort of, David had like that. And she'd buy little things just to make you smile and make you happy. And that's the whole point, is just give it to someone that you care about and that you want, you know, you want them to know you care about them. And it gives money to Marie Curie at the end of the day. Dogs are known as a man's best friend, but in some cases they go beyond that. Jackie Dean has set up a business for her dog to help people with, her emotional, with their emotional and physical well-being. Jesse Price reports. Hey Doggy is a business based in Dorset run by Jackie Dean, owner of a three-year-old red fox Labrador, Nelly. As a team, Jackie and Nelly can offer animal-assisted interventions, also known as AAI. This means that using their skills and training, they can help individuals or groups in educational settings and care homes. The impact is massive um, working with young people that um, maybe with new, neurodivergence so they struggle in mainstream schools um, and it can really bring them out into you know help them um, uh, with their confidence. Is it it helps so many people whether it's a um, person that has dementia, um, just general um, spending time with a dog, stroking her, um, it might bring back some memories um, going into schools, working with um, students that are struggling for whatever reason, um, it, it is, is a massive importance for them So, um, and us helping them. After working okay. in the NHS for many years with a background of helping people, Jackie decided to train in AAI. 
so she trained to be a dog trainer with paws. I walked with a young lad um, out in the forest. He he was he didn't enjoy walking. His mum said um, I ended up having to carry him all the time or put him in a push chair. He he had autism or has auti- autism. Um, and spending time with Nelly, he actually walked for 45 minutes without being picked up or put in a chair. And um, he was non-verbal as well. And at the end of it, he said bye, goodbye to Nelly. She hopes to raise more awareness about the importance of therapy dogs and hopes that her business will expand. Jessie Price, Buzz News. Now to Harry Slynn with the sport. Thanks, darling. Premier League Player of the Month. The Cherry Strikers scored six times in December, including their hat-trick against Nottingham Forest. Now we are going to head to the new Caffrey ground, where Bournemouth Development Squad have beaten Cardiff City under 21 3-2. Buzz News reporter Dan Palmer has the latest. There was a feisty afternoon of action here at New Cuthbury, but Bournemouth did eventually run out, run out 3-2 winners against Cardiff City. There was a quiet first 15 minutes by all accounts. But in the 16th minute, Ben Winterburn from a corner opened the scoring. Brilliant header yeah. from the edge of the six-yard box. Cardiff had a golden right. chance to equalise in the, uh, to equalise. Sorry, in the 35th minute, they had a penalty. Ben uh, Cameron playing in the Bournemouth goal, who's been superb all season, made a superb diving save to his right. Cardiff did eventually get level in the 61st minute. 61st minute, but Bournemouth struck straight back. Daniel Adjuaje, who can't stop scoring at the moment, made it 2-1 to Bournemouth. 2-2 again in the 81st minute. It seemed like it just wasn't going to be Bournemouth's day. Just outside yeah. the area. Beautiful strike from Cardiff, to be fair. But then in the 85th minute, Ben Green, Ben Winterburn got his second, actually, for Bournemouth. I spoke to Alan Connell at full-time, Bournemouth manager. He said that you know he wanted his team to have belief to keep fighting till the end. And that's exactly what they did with the 3-2 win. Bournemouth are back to the top of the table. A good day in the office for Bournemouth here at New Wimborne's ground in New Cuthbury. Bournemouth women's team are also in action this weekend, facing up against Swindon Town in a much anticipated fixture. Here from manager Dan Cuss and midfielder Olivia Bendito ahead of Sunday's game. Yeah, I think the players have been fantastic. I've got to say we've assembled a really good squad here, but it's, it's down to the players performing on the pitch week after week. And They've done that. They've set themselves really Harry, high standards. Well. Um, and then we take each game as it comes. I know it's a bit of a yeah, cliche a little bit from, and uh, from a coach cute. and manager, but okay. it's important that we do that. Don't look too far ahead and try and win that next game. And the next game, Swindon, and we know yeah. that's going to be a tough one. They're a very strong side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're working hard this week. We know what um, we know what to do against them. We know what they're going to do against us. We now look to the weekend's football games, where first up, high-flying Southampton mm-hmm. are at home to struggling Sheffield Wednesday and will look to apply the pressure at the top of the table with a win. Eastleigh face off against Southend United at home in the National League. The Spitfires <laughs> are hoping to carry their FA Cup momentum into this league nice. game. Weymouth hosts Loud Town at the Bob Lucas Stadium in the National League South. Weymouth have only won one win in the last five <coughs> matches and want to separate themselves from the relegation. A big weekend of sport to look forward to. Back to you, Charlotte. That's it for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from Bournemouth and surrounding areas. Bye for now.